بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Brothers, sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today inshallah we will be covering a very, a very important uh, aspect in the history of Islam and that will be the Hijrah. The Hijrah is fundamental uh, to this deen to such a degree that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if it was not for the Hijrah, I would have been a man from the Ansar. So you can understand how virtuous the Hijrah is. If it was not for the Hijrah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I would have been from the people of Medina. Now, where is the first mention of Hijrah in the history of Islam? Anybody know? The first mention of Hijrah in the history of Islam is when the first revelation descended to the Prophet Sallallahu and then Khadija anha took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Warqat ibn Nawfal and he told him what had happened and Warqa said to him no man has come with this message, but his people have driven him out. So this is the first mention of the Hijrah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu was actually offered even before the people of Medina came. It was actually offered by Tufail Odosi, who was from Yemen, that to come to Yemen. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really didn't take up the offer. And then you had the Bayat the bay al Uqbat al Ula and Bayat al Uqbat Thani, where the, the people of Medina came for Hajj and they gave Bayat to the Prophet وسلم, and then the following year they gave the Bayat to the Prophet وسلم, again and then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, now decided to migrate. So he, the Sahaba عنه, would come to the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet وسلم, would give them permission. One would come, he would say, I want to migrate. And the Prophet وسلم, would give them my, uh, permission. Somebody else would come, they would give, he would give them permission. So slowly, slowly, everybody was migrating who could migrate. Migration, migration, those Sahaba who migrated are generally regarded as more esteemed than those who did not migrate or embraced Islam after migration. There were one group of people who couldn't migrate because they were too weak or they were slaves, but then there were those who could migrate. So those who migrated and could migrate, their virtue is greater than those who could migrate but didn't migrate. So you, the muhaddithin speak about this, that those who migrated were better than those who did not migrate. Now, the migration took place from Mecca to Medina. The people, the Ansar, were people who were very welcoming. Even today, if you go to Medina, you go in Ramadan, you go any time, you know, the people of Medina, they are very welcoming. You know, if you, if you go in Ramadan, you will see they have their, 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 their sheets and their foods out, and, and they will call you, they will literally pull you down and want you to eat with them. And the Sahaba, the Muhajirun, actually say, look at this, they say that we have never found a group of people like the Ansar. In some cases, what the Ansar did, if they had two wives, they were ready to divorce one and marry her off to the Muhajir. If they had a business, they were ready to half their business and give half to the Ansar. So the Sahaba عنهم, say, the Muhajirun say, that we have never come across a group of people who were as generous as the Ansar. And then they say something very profound. See, this was, this was the mentality. This was the mindset. They say, we are scared that they will take all the reward. That all the reward for our migration and all other reward because of their generosity and because of their nature to always help other people. So, so, Abu Bakr anhu one day comes to the Prophet sallallahu and he says to the message of Allah, he says, O oh, message of Allah, I want to migrate. The Prophet sallallahu says to him, wait, maybe Allah will give you a companion. So what Abu Bakr anhu does, he buys two camels and he keeps them. For approximately four months, he's feeding these two camels. 
for when the command comes and he's hoping that his companionship will be with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam after approximately four months many people have migrated now the mushrikeen got very concerned their concern was that the muslims are migrating a day may come that the muslim became, may become very very strong and then they will come back to mecca and they will take over mecca so what they decided was that let's kill muhammad but as i mentioned to you earlier on they had this clan and tribal system so if any specific clan member killed him then his clan would take revenge so what they said what we do is that we choose clan youngsters from each and every clan and then they they go and they kill him. they strike him at once so then the his bani hashim can't take revenge from every single one and they will be compelled to take the diya they will take the blood money so this is what they decided allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that this was about to happen before this Aisha radiallahu anha say that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come to a house every day. Either in the morning or in the evening, every single day he would come to a home. One day the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes mid-afternoon. Now in the Arab peninsula, you wouldn't generally go out in the afternoon because it's too hot. So he comes to the house, he has his head covered so nobody can recognize who he is. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is asleep. He wakes Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu up and he says to Abu Bakr that I have been given permission to migrate. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, As-Sahba ya Rasulullah, will I have the honor of being your companion in the migration? And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you will have companionship with me. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu begins to cry. Aisha radiallahu anha says, that this was the first time that I ever saw anybody crying out of happiness. Now, subhanAllah, look, look at this. Abu Bakr is going to migrate with the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knows that there's a possibility here that if the mushrikeen catch them, they will kill him. But just having the honor of migrating for, with the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so great for Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu becomes elated. Now, here's the permission has been given. He has informed Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu about the migration. Then the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes back and he makes Ali radiallahu anhu lie on his bed. All the youngsters are outside the house waiting to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes some sand, he throws it at them. And it blinds them. As Allah, Allah says in the Quran, Ma ramayta idh ramayta wa Allah ramah. You did not throw when you threw, but it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who threw. And he walks straight past them and none of them see him. What does he do? He goes to the house of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. From the house of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, they leave. Now where do they leave? Look, Mecca is south medina is north so naturally you would go north but the prophet sallallahu doesn't go north he goes actually south and he goes to a cave the gari thawr the cave of thawr and that's where they stay now a great lesson for us here is look the message of allah sallallahu was destined to fulfill his mission nobody could stop the message of allah he had Allah's protection. He was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why didn't the message of Allah just walk north? There was nothing to stop him. He could have just walked north. No, the message of Allah is showing the ummah that sometimes you are weak. And therefore, when you are weak, then you take the necessary steps. And the Prophet sallallahu in this case, you know, didn't have an army. There was only a few Muslims. Rather than going north, he's teaching the ummah. That different circumstances need different strategies. So the Prophet wasallam now he leaves Mecca. When he's leaving Mecca, he turns around and he says to Mecca, Oh Mecca, you are the most beloved place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the face of this earth. And if it wasn't for the sake that your people are driving me out, I would have never left you. They, leave, they reach the Ghari Thawr. 
Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu now takes the lead and he says, Messenger of Allah, wait, don't come in yet. Let me clean the cave out. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu now goes and cleans the cave. Now Abu Bakr's got a top garment. In the cave, there's a number of holes. So what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu does is that he takes off his top, he tears his top, and then he fills the holes. But his top runs out, he's got no more cloth left, and there's still another hole there. So then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu invites the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to enter, and the Messenger of Allah is tired, he wants to rest, so he lies on the thigh of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu there's one hole left, so Bakr is concerned that there may, a snake may come out, a, a, a scorpion may come out, so he places his foot on top of this hole. It happened so that there was a snake in that hole, there was a snake hole, and the snake came out and they bit the foot of Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu. Now you can imagine, you can imagine the excruciating pain that Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu is going through. Actually you can't imagine in all reality. It's very difficult to imagine. But Abu Bakr does not want to wake the message of Allah up. He bears the pain. I don't think, you know, love is of different types, obviously. A, a, a love that a mother has for the, her child, a love that a husband has for the wife, wife has for the husband. But I don't think there's ever been an example of Abu Bakr's love, like Abu Bakr's love for the message of Allah. Really. You show me in history, one mother who has been bit by a snake and doesn't want to wake up her child because she doesn't want to inconvenience her child. You show me a child who has done this to his parents. You show me a husband, show me the Romeo, the Juliet, show me anybody in history who has been bit by a scorpion and a snake and says, no, I don't want to disturb my beloved. I don't want to wake my wife up. I don't want to wake my husband up. Never. This was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. They say, you know, in the old days before the advent of pampers, when a child would urinate, the mother would sleep on the wet part and she would put her child on the dry part. Show me one person in history who's been bit by a snake and, is not, and will not wake up their child. He will not find it. And this is why Abu Bakr's love for the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was unparalleled. There's nothing that comes close to the Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu now is in this excruciating pain. He can't control his tears. So one of his tears rolls down and it falls on the blessed cheek of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the message of Allah wakes up and he sees Abu Bakr in this pain. And he says, Bakr, what happened? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu tells him, and the Messenger of Allah said, why didn't you wake me up? Why didn't you wake me up? So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah, I didn't want to wake you up. So then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes his saliva, his blessed saliva, and he places it on the foot of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The narrations mention it was as though Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had never been bitten by a snake. The Mubarak saliva of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now what's happening in Mecca? In Mecca, after a little while, the youngsters realize that there's something funny going on. So they jump over the wall and they see that Ali Radiallahu Anhu is sleeping on the place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they know, look, even the Mushrikeen, they know that most likely he's gone to the house of Abu Bakr. So Abu Jal goes to the house of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he knocks the door, Asma radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr opens the door and he says, where's your father? And she says, I don't know. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, so Abu Jahal slaps her. He slaps her, the narration mentioned that it knocked her earring out, that's how hard he slapped her. Abu Bakr left without leaving a penny at home. Not a dirham, not a dinar. When it became known that Abu Bakr had left, Abu Kuhafa, his father, who was blind at the time, came. And he asked Asma. He said, Asma, tell me, has, has Abu Bakr left anything? Or has he gone with everything he has? Look, subhanAllah, may Allah reward Asma, radiallahu anha. She would have, could have easily said, you know, 
He's left us penniless. That's what most girls would have done. That's what most wives, most husbands, most brothers, most sisters would have done. No. Asma says, no, my grandfather, he's left wealth behind. So she brings this sack, she puts these things in it which kind of resemble coins. And she says, my grandfather touched. So he touches it and he says, oh, well, he's done well. You know, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he embraced Islam, before he embraced Islam, had 40,000 dirhams. He was a very successful businessman. Come Hijrah, he had 5,000 dirhams left. That's all he had. Everything had been spent in the path of the deen. The 5,000 dirhams that he had left on the Hijrah, he even took those. Didn't leave a dime at home. And we will, inshallah, I will cover this later on in more detail about spending, how one should spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, now the mushrikeen, they find this expert tracker. They put a bounty of a hundred camels on the head of Abu Bakr and the Prophet wasallam, dead or alive. Dead or alive, just bring them back. We will give you a hundred camels. Now camels, the Arabs loved camels. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when, when the trumpet is blown, one of the signs is what? وَإِذَا الْإِشَارُ أُتِّلَتْ yeah? When, the, when the, the man will leave his 10-month-old camel, which is 10 months pregnant, he will, he will forsake. Why? Because a ten, no Arab would forsake a 10-month camel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here gives an example of the nature of the day of judgment that a man whose camel is 10 months pregnant, he won't care about her. Imagine somebody gives you a hundred camels. Hundred camels, dead or alive. Dead or alive. Subhanallah. So now everybody's running around and looking for Abu Bakr and uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they find this expert tracker. So what happens is that this expert tracker, instead of going north, they come south. And they come closer and closer to the cave of Thawr. To the degree that Umayyah bin Khalaf, they say that Umayyah bin Khalaf moved forward. And they said to him, go on, go, you know, go even further. And Umayyah bin Khalaf says, no, here there is a nest and a spider's web which is older than Muhammad himself. Some say that this narration is contested. Others have said that this narration is Hassan about the spider and the, uh, the nest. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu seeing the mushrikeen at the mouth of the cave, he says to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he begins to cry. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if one of them look at their feet, they will see us. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Bakr, ma dhannuka bi thnayn Allahu thalithuhum. What do you think about those two when Allah is their third? La ilaha illallah. He said, the Messenger of Allah is saying to him, impossible Abu Bakr. Even if they look at their feet, they will still not find her. Allah says in the Quran, la tudrikuhu al-absar wa huwa yudrikuhu al-absar. Eyes cannot encapsulate in, in, uh, encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who encompasses the eyesight what does this mean what Allah is saying here is even if they look down they still would not be able to see and then, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the verse and it's amazing that this verse in the virtue of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is wallah is just amazing Let, let's Let's uh, analyze this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In tansuruhu faqad nasarahullah. If none of them do not help you, okay? Illa tansuruhu faqad nasarahullah. If they don't help you, but Allah will help you. Allah has helped him. So Allah is, in essence, he's saying, if nobody is ready to help you, O Muhammad, let it be known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Okay? 
Now, who is the... So basically here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the entirety of humanity. He's saying if nobody is ready to help him, the message of Allah, let it be known that Allah has helped him. Meaning that Allah helped him in the hijrah. Who is the only man who really who was fundamental in helping the Messenger of Allah? Abu Bakr Astik radiallahu anhu. The only man who's really made an exception out of this khitab, out of you know this address, is Abu Bakr Astik radiallahu anhu. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, when the mushrikeen drove in out, Id Humafil Ghar, when both of them were in the cave. Thaniyath Nain. The second out of the two. Or you can also translate this as that there's only one more other person with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Now Thaniyath Nain, very interesting, the second out of the two, Imam Qurtubi here says that this is an indication to the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu that this is an indication to the Khilafah of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. That Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was destined to be the next Khalif. Okay, then he says, إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِلصَّاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا When they are both in the grave and he said to his companion, who? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now says to his companion Abu Bakr. Now again, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is the only person out of all the companions, there were approximately, approximately 140,000 companions, approximately, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. In Tabuk, they said it was 100,000 uh, Sahaba. In the Hajj, there were anywhere from 100,000 to 140,000 Sahaba who participated. The only Sahabi who is known and is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala addresses as a companion is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And this is why, according to some scholars, that anybody who denies that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is a Sahabi is actually out of the fold of Islam. This is the opinion of a, a group of scholars who anybody who denies that Abu Bakr is a Sahabi is out of the fold of Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tahzan. In Allah ma'ana, do not grieve. Indeed, Allah is with us. La tahzan. Look, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, doesn't say la takhaf. Allah says la tahzan. Why? Because generally the word la takhaf is used for do not fear. When you fear, you fear for yourself. When you grieve, you grieve for somebody else. So here Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is not worried about himself. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is concerned about the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tahzan. La tahzan. La, he doesn't say, La takhaf. And, and this is, shows, and this is why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu crying in the grave, he said, Abu Bakr, what are you crying for? And he said, Oh, message of Allah, I'm not crying for myself. I'm worried about you. Because if anything happens to you, the dawah finishes. The revelation finishes. As for me, I'm just a person, just an individual. It doesn't make any any difference. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tahzan in Allah ma'ana. Indeed, Allah is with us. Look at this fadila. Allah is with us. He doesn't say Allah is with me. He says Allah is with us. There's two of them in that cave, Abu Bakr and the Messenger of Allah. And Allah is saying, Allah is with both of you, not just one of you. I got my messenger there, but then there's Abu Bakr and Allah is with both of them. Look at this and look at the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is this. That Musa alayhi salatu wasalam has now freed his people from his qawm, so from Fir'aun. So they've left. So... Fir'aun and his lackeys now, his lackeys come to him and they say to Fir'aun, you know, look, how could you allow these slaves to humiliate you in this manner? They've humiliated you. What you need to actually do is chase them and kill them, wipe them out. So Fir'aun now decides to chase them. So the Bani Israel are elated, they're happy, they've actually achieved their freedom, they're, they're going. And then all of a sudden they look back. 
and they see the large army of Fir'aun on their tail. So they turn to Musa, and they say, Musa, Fir'aun is coming. What's in front of them? In front of them is a river. There is no way they can go. Behind them is the army of Fir'aun, ready to slaughter them. In front of them is the, is the river, and they will drown because they can't swim. So they say to Musa alayhi salatu salam, Oh Musa, game over for us now. There's no way we can go. So Musa alayhi salatu salam says to them, Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi. He said, never. With me is my Lord Sayyidin, and Allah will guide me. Look at this. He's got the entirety of Bani Israel with him. And the Quran says what? He says that my Lord is with me, not with you lot. Allah will show me the path. For Abu Bakr, Allah says, In Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. Let me tell you another beautiful thing here. You know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Allah ma'asabirin. And in other places, he says uh, similar things. In Allah ma'asabirin. Indeed, Allah is with the patient ones. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are with those who are patient, okay? As long as you have the quality of patience with you, Allah will be with you. Soon as you lose the quality of patience, Allah will no longer be with you. Here Allah says, in Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. Allah is not speaking about any characteristic, no sifa. Allah is saying that Allah is with you in person. With your person, Allah is with you. Meaning, irrespective of whatever state you are in, Allah is always with you. Istimrar. Allah will all, Do you understand what I'm saying here? In the, in the verse, in Allah ma'asabirin, Allah is with you as long as you have sabr. Here Allah is saying, Allah is with your person. Allah will always be with you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَةُ عَلَيْهِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Sakina upon them. The Allah says, here is singular. So who was Sakina revealed upon? Was it revealed upon the Messenger of Allah? Was it revealed upon Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu? The ulama actually say that this was revealed on Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Why? Because the Messenger of Allah didn't need Sakina. He wasn't in the state of huzn. He wasn't in the state of grief. It was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who was in the state of grief for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Sakina and the tranquility that Allah subhanahu wa taala descended was upon Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Then he says, "Wa ayyadahu bi junudin lam tarawha," and then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assisted them with an army. La ilaha illallah. Allah assisted them with an army. Subhanallah. You know. And this is also a virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assisted them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes off by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the kalimatul, uh, kalimatullahi the high and the kalima of kufr low. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory even in the cave. This was a victory for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn certain basic lessons from this. The entirety of the hijrah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn basic lessons from this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the sacrifices of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. صلى الله على خير خلق محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه رحمتك يا رحمة رحمين زاكم الله خيرا for watching and please do not forget to watch the next episode and inshallah with your du'as there will be plenty more history series coming very soon بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله